My name is Lori Compass. I live in Fort Atkinson, and I'm the chairperson of the committee to recall Scott Fitzgerald. All of us here today are ordinary people who have done an extraordinary thing. We are here to announce that together we have exercised our constitutional right and collected enough signatures to recall Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald. Oh. <laughs> And we are going to keep collecting signatures tonight and tomorrow, and we will finish this strong. We took action because over the past years, or year, sorry, we have watched Scott Fitzgerald change from a man who won re-election on a platform of jobs and economic development into a man who was more interested in lining up behind Governor Walker than standing up for us. We watched him abuse his power, we watched him betray our trust. We watched and we took action. We started this work with no organization and no real plan, just the will and the determination of a committed group of people all across the 13th Senate District. I am so happy to be here with just a few of those people today. Somehow this movement or campaign or whatever it is has grown from what some said was a crazy idea into a community of citizens who are taking positive action to regain their voice in the legislature. We've had farmers driving from farm to farm to collect signatures. We've had guys camping out in their yard. We've had moms looking over city maps like generals, plotting and planning <laughs> the best canvassing routes. And all of us are united by our common belief that government should be responsive to the will of the people. We have developed a diverse, widespread community of people who might never have met any other way. Our volunteers are of all ages, from all socioeconomic backgrounds, and we hold a wide range of political beliefs. But we hold these things in common. All of us want to be honorably represented. All of us want to restore fairness and integrity to the legislature. And all of us are committed to the difficult and serious task of reclaiming Wisconsin's proud tradition of open, honest government. This is truly a grassroots movement, and it's been my pleasure to guide our volunteers' efforts. And for the last two weeks, we've been excited to work side by side with another grassroots organization, We Are Wisconsin. Their executive director, Kristen Kroll, has joined us today. She'd like to say a few words, and then we'll hear from a couple of our volunteers. Mm -hmm. Good morning. My name is Kristen Kroll, and I'm the proud executive director of We Are Wisconsin. We Are Wisconsin is grateful to be standing here today with dedicated volunteers from Senate District 13 who have stood up on behalf of working families, on behalf of members of their districts of teachers, and firefighters, and correction officers, and ordinary citizens who want to take our government back and want to restore democratic principles to our state a state that I'm proud to have lived in my entire life, and a state that right now many of us don't recognize. Scott Fitzgerald has led the divisive nature in which this, um, that this government has taken our state over the past year. And we're here today to begin the process to reclaim the values, the Wisconsin values, that members of Senate District 13 hold dear. We're excited. I'm grateful that the work over the last 60 days in Senate 13 has enough signatures to trigger an election. We're excited that the movement in Senate District 13 is growing strong and will not rest until the final hour of which we can collect signatures on Saturday. To, Senate, to Senator Fitzgerald, I, as Executive Director of We Are Wisconsin, on behalf of the thousands of grassroots activists all over the state, say this to you. We haven't forgotten what you started almost a year ago today. I think maybe you thought that some of us would grow tired and weary and go home and have a holiday. Well, it started in the snow. <laughs> and it's snowing today. <laughs> and we're not leaving. <laughs> Blatant, 
power grab united us around a common vision of a better Wisconsin, of a Wisconsin where my four children can look at their government and say, we're proud. And right now, we are not proud. Yeah. We are not proud of your actions. We are not proud of your leadership. And we've done something about it. You brought us together in a unique way, in a way that none of us may have ever met. And for that, for that I say thank you. And thank you for uniting a fire in us to really stand up for what the values and principles of this state are. And we're not done, and we are not resting until you are recalled and integrity and democracy is restored to Senate District 13 and the rest of our state. At this point, I'm really pleased and honored to introduce two fantastic leaders, Sarah Hammer and Gary Olson. My name is Sarah Hammer. I'm a mom, a wife, a private sector RN from Fort Atkinson. And like many Wisconsinites, I worked two jobs last year to make ends meet. When the opportunity to recall Senator Fitzgerald and Governor Walker came up, I quit one of my paying jobs so that I could dedicate more time volunteering to this effort. That's how strongly I believe in it. I became determined to recall Scott Fitzgerald almost a year ago when he went on Fox News and told the world he was pushing through the anti-collective bargaining bill to weak, weaken Obama's chance at a 2012 re-election and admitted it had nothing to do with repairing Wisconsin's supposed budget crisis. I thought to myself, you would take away the rights of over 100,000 public servants to gain political power? That's just wrong. I'm not in a union, nor is my husband, but as a nurse, people trust me every day with the people who are most precious to them. It's my duty and my passion to care for those people. And so I won't sit idly by why Scott Fitzgerald and Scott Walker kicked tens of thousands of Wisconsinites off Badger Care. As a mom of young children, I won't be silent while they devastate our public schools. As a citizen, I will stand against the backdoor dealing brand of shady politics with which Fitzgerald and Walker infected our state. I've knocked over 700 doors myself this past week to give homebound individuals being devastated by these cuts to healthcare a chance to have their voices be heard. I take their names and addresses and phone numbers and I plan to revisit them to make sure that they also vote in the next election as well. And I'm Gary Olson. And I'm here not because I'm unique. I'm here because I'm just the opposite. I'm just a person who was born and raised in Wisconsin and I live out in the district that Senator Scott Fitzgerald calls our area. And I'd like to thank some of his staffers for being here. I kind of hoped he would have been here today. Because I'm a lifelong Wisconsinite, and I'm also a lifelong Republican. I have voted for this man, not once, not twice. I voted for him and supported him. And when things went differently this year, I met with him. Now, that was not an easy process, but I met with him. And it was so, so difficult to listen to what he had to say. I thought here we were both Republicans, both military men, but then I started to realize, unlike him, I was born and raised here my whole life. Unlike him, I have been to the combat zone twice, unlike him. I'm not angry with him. I just wish he would have changed. I told him that. But as I told him that face to face on different occasions, he made it very clear to me that the interest that I had the concerns that I had in trying to restore democracy and bring back the Wisconsin that I know, to bring back the GOP that I know, not this far right, my dad never brought me up with that, but to bring that back, he wasn't interested. He made it very clear to me that his special interest groups and his money from out of state were more valuable to him than my family and I, okay? Scott, I'm not angry with you, and I should say Senator, I'm not angry with you but I'm disappointed and I need to protect my family and our way of life. And you know what? I'm not gonna run against you as you encouraged me to do that day in this office. But I will tell you that I would relish the opportunity to do a public speaking engagement with you. I would love to do a public debate. I'm just an average person. I will take you on any day just to show the hypocrisy in what you say. Please staffers, take that back to him. Thank you. Signature 
pictures do you actually have at this point? We're not giving out the exact number. The minimum required is 16,742, and we have reached that number. How much over that number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that we are we're excited about uh, filing on Tuesday and letting the world see that. So we'll keep you in suspense for a few more days. <laughs> Senator Fitzgerald filed his complaint yesterday claiming that the 60 days should end today rather than tomorrow. Uh, are you concerned at all that that will cut into any cushion you might have? And do, you, do you believe that he has any legal basis for making that argument? Um, this just seems like an attempt to try and silence the thousands and thousands of people who have uh, spoken up for this, and I'm not concerned about it at all. Corey, are you considering what, a run against Senator Fitzgerald if this actually does trigger an election? Uh, no, I, that's, that's not why I started this, no. Is there someone that you believe will step up or someone that you would like to support given that you were the chair of this effort? I'm not really part of the conversation, you know. I mean, I assume Democrats are talking and Republicans are talking and all of that, but I'm not really part of all of that. Aren't you going to need a candidate soon, given the short window that the campaign would have? Um, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure what the timing is going to be like. The, my sense is that Scott Fitzgerald is a powerful man with a lot of money, and I would think that whoever the candidate is would want to wait until the last minute because the mud's going to start flying the minute that person announces. So, you know, I would think whoever it would be would want to wait until the last possible minute. Have you worked with the Democratic Party or United Wisconsin at all on this effort? Um, the, the volunteers at the local level have put our petitions on their clipboards. We've had our boxes in their offices. So, like, the Jefferson County office has a little box for our blank petitions and a box to collect the signed petitions. But, you know, other than that, that's, that's been it. And the Dodge County office, too. And grassroots offices all over. Congratulations on your historic achievement. Can somebody share maybe a thought or two on what it'll take to be successful at the next step, actually replacing Mr. Fitzgerald? I have been so focused on getting these signatures, I have no idea, <laughs> honestly. I would say, though, in addition to that, the, the amount of folks that are out day to day um, participating in this is historic. Uh, and as someone who's lived in the state my entire life, um, the number of volunteers, the number of trained leaders and activists is, is something we've never seen before. And so I think, you know, the base is, the base exists. Um, and the sheer number of signatures exist that if mobilized successfully, um, if I were Senator Fitzgerald, I would be very nervous. This is a very serious uh, group of individuals that come from all backgrounds. This is not, a, you know, this is a group that includes a lot of Republicans and independents. Um, and so in order to be successful, it is to keep this coalition going, active and strong, united against sending Senator Fitzgerald home. How many volunteers were involved in this effort? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> it seems like every day people crop up in other places. And 10, 300, 4,000? Oh, okay. uh, hundreds. Uh, hundreds and hundreds. You know, just going through the, the signatures and looking at the names, we see the same names over and over again. You know, really dedicated people like me. Um, but then also, I'll get something and say, oh, you know, it looked like somebody went home over Christmas. You know, maybe they went to college in Madison and went home over Christmas and collect, collected signatures from their family or neighbors. So. It really is incredibly diverse. We can say though that last weekend alone, over 500 individuals um, signed up for volunteer shifts, participated in district um, when we're out just last weekend. So it is, it is hundreds, not, uh, not uh, you know, 50. What's yeah. the nature of the relationship between We Are Wisconsin and this recall committee? Yeah, yeah I mean, I think We Are Wisconsin is an organization, an independent political organization that is really about bringing the voices of the grassroots organizations and citizens of the state together. Um, and we share a common vision for what that looks like uh, in terms of restoring democracy to Senate District 13. Um, and we've been proud to do what we can to help mobilize our volunteers um, to support the great effort that this team um, and Lori's leadership have pulled together. So it's been a, a mutual partnership with a lot of respect 
um, a lot of enthusiasm, and we look forward to continuing to work together uh, in the coming months. At what stage did We Are Wisconsin get involved in this effort? Uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, we formally got engaged um, <laughs> within the last, yeah, you know, several weeks. And, and had you, has We Are Wisconsin been involved with Signature Gathering and any of the other recalls? Um, we have we have grassroots activists that are participating in all of the different recall mm -hmm. uh, elections and the other Senate elections as well. Um, and even though our organization formally uh, did not have staff until uh, the last several weeks, our activists have been participating um, along the way the whole entire way. So yes. Okay, L Lori, I wonder what you think of it. Uh, Frankly, your recall committee was sort of treated like the stepchild in all of this. You know, the other, I mean, the <laughs> party, they behind the other three recalls, and they, you know, when they have been legal cases, they've been represented. Your your campaign hasn't. How do you feel about uh, that? How you're treated in the early stages, and how you've sort of been brought into the fold at this stage? Well, I can certainly understand their strategy. You know, they they thought this couldn't be done, and so why throw a lot of money and resources at a hopeless case, I guess is what they thought. <laughs> and they, they looked at the situation and they decided that these three senators were the most vulnerable and that they were gonna focus on that. And that's a smart strategy. I, I don't bear them any ill will. But living in the district and knowing that this sentiment was there, I just couldn't let this opportunity pass us by. I knew the energy was gonna be there to recall Walker and I thought <coughs> we could just kind of piggyback onto this Maybe it won't be a problem that we're not a formally organized party. Maybe it'll be okay that we're just these little groups of people all over the district. <laughs> and it worked out great. Can I comment on that one, please? Yeah. i just like to say, <coughs> let's, make, let's make no bones about it. The senator has told me himself at the Watertown listening <laughs> session, over 50% of his money captured to fight this recall effort has come from out of state has come from out of state. I'm not from out of state, we're not from out of state, we're right here. So you ask, how does she feel about the relationship? I only know what we've discussed. And this effort is what brought us together. We didn't know each other before this. And she's exactly right in telling you that the people in his district, our district, I should say, we want him gone. But we know that the changes that he has helped spirit lead you know, he spearheaded so many changes to campaign finance reform. He took the little bit that was in there, and yes, you can say that it was a broken system, but there was money in there that's now gone because of things that he did. He is making it harder and harder. If there was someone in this group that wanted to step up and run against him, you are truly running against Goliath. You are running against a career politician who has connections and money that we could not combat. But the thing that he can't take from us is our vote to recall him and to vote him out of office. I'm sorry to steal the show from you. <laughs> but it was so disheartening to me to sit there and watch three other senators being recalled and no efforts coming towards our area because people were intimidated by what this man brings to the table. That's not democracy. Democracy should have an opportunity for good people to step up and put their hat in the ring. It shouldn't be about who has more money and who has more connections. And we know that this guy has them. Whoever steps into the ring is going to have a huge fight. But I'll tell you what, Goliath can come down. You said you, said you, you, said you all run, but would you expect a Republican challenger to him, uh, challenging him on the collective bargaining issue? I think that for me as a Republican, that would be the sweetest justice. <laughs> <laughs> because I stand here with independents and Democrats, and there might even be Republicans in here, other than myself. But what I'm saying to you is, for me, this man has taken the Republican Party and pushed it so far to the right, it isn't what I recognize. I am not opposed to having another Republican in. In fact, I'd love to have another Republican in. Even if you and I disagree on that, I don't know. I don't know if we disagree. What I'm saying is, I don't want someone so far to the right that it represents what this man already shows us. Do you support the recalls of the governor and lieutenant governor as well? I can tell you right now that the body of work that they represent is not something that bodes well with my family and I in the way of life that we have come to know in Wisconsin. So you, want to talk, you want to talk about skin in the game? I, my family, <coughs> my neighbors, my friends, we have skin in the game. 
But this man, this governor, is taking more and more from very few people. There's no doubt that we have a problem in this state, but we have a bipartisan system. Okay, As a Republican, I can look across the aisle as just a, a, a non-politician, and I can say to you, they're over there. They have their point of view. I don't have to agree with everything. But we don't have to have a win at all cost type of mentality for the GOP. And that's the part that bothers me. I think Why? we have time for one more question how before much, uh, Representative Halsey takes the room over. So I'll, I'll do two more issues. How, how much help do you, now that you've reached this stage, how much help do you expect from the party and, and the other groups that are helping the other three recall efforts? How much do you expect realistically going forward with the election if it is certified, given the nature of the district that you guys live in? I really don't know. Honestly, I really have been just concentrating on getting the signatures, and we're looking forward to working hard tonight and tomorrow and turning them in on Tuesday. And beyond that, it's anybody's guess. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Anybody wants to sign a petition? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.